Welcome to our lecture online. Now looking at this next example, hmm, it's almost similar to what we've done before, but there's an added weight right here that we have to deal with. And so let's see how we solve this problem. Again, we know that the pulleys have no mass and the pulleys have no friction. So it's a ideal situation and we're trying to find the force required to keep everything in the static situation or to pull the weights up at a constant speed. The force would be the same in either case. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this string right here and notice that since there's no mass and no friction we know that the tension on the left side must equal the tension on the right side. And then if we draw a free body diagram around this part of the contraption like that then we look at all the forces acting on what's inside the free body diagram. We can see that there's two forces pulling up this way and there is one force pulling down this way. And uh, so let's see here, what's the force pulling down? Well, that would be equal to the weight of the object and the two forces pulling up is the tension in each of the strings. So we use the equation that the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero, which means that the two forces acting up, which is two times the tension, minus the force acting down, which is the weight of the object, equals zero. That means two times the tension equals the weight of the object, or the tension equals the weight of the object divided by two. All right, the next thing we should do is look at this string right here, and notice that this is not the same string. So the tension here is going to be different. Let's call it T2, and let's call it T over here. And now let's draw a free body diagram around this weight. So, relative to, hmm, do I want to do it around the weight? Yes, around the weight. Okay, so relative to this right here, we can see that we have a force pulling down. And the force pulling down is going to be equal to the weight of this object plus the tension caused by this string. So the, the the force on the down is the weight plus the tension and then the weight going and the force going up is equal to T2. So you can see that it's tension downward and the weight of that object downward and T2 upward. So based on that we can say that the sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero. So we have upward T2 and downward that would be the weight and the tension. So it would be minus the weight and minus the tension. Now we already, oh, and that must add up to zero. Now we already know what the tension is equal to, it's weight divided by two, so we have tension two minus the weight, minus the weight divided by two equals zero, and so that would be the tension two minus three halves times the weight equals zero, or tension two is equal to three halves the weight of that object. All right. So now we know what the tension is equal to, we now also know what T2 is equal to. Now we go to the next string, that would be this string right here, and let's call the tension of that string three, uh, T3. And notice that it must be the same on both sides of the pulley, and it must be the same on both sides of the pulley. So we can see that the force required is equal to T3. Now that means we're going to need another free body diagram, and let's do it around this pulley right here. And relative to that pulley, we have one force pulling down, like this, which is T2, and two forces pulling up, which is T3. So again, we use the same equation. We can say that the sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero. We have two T3 tensions pulling up, two T3, and minus T2 pulling down. And that must add up to zero. Now T2 is equal to 3 halves W, so 2 times T3 minus 3 halves W equal 0, so we have 2 T3 equals 3 over 2 W, or T3 is equal to 3 quarters W. And so that is the force required, because we know that force is equal to T3, so that means that the force is equal to 3 quarters the weight of both objects, or either one of the objects, I should say. Now, 
What is the mechanical advantage in this case? So it's a little bit more difficult to think about it because there's two separate weights. So if you think about it, uh, you need three quarters the weight of one to lift up two W objects. So the force, the force required, so it's essentially three quarters of force required or three quarters the weight required to lift up two W. So that means that W is equal to eight over three W, oh, not equal, but proportional to. So in other words, the mechanical advantage is eight thirds to one. So eight thirds to one would be considered the mechanical advantage. If you kind of want to push it a little bit, because obviously these two objects will not be moving up at the same speed, but a single force will cause both objects to move up. You need a force required to 3 quarters W to move the 2 W up, so you can actually think about it as having a mechanical advantage of 8 thirds to 1, but the force required is just 3 quarters the weight of one of those objects you're lifting up, and that is how it's done.